Hi there, I'm back to uh, working on Weston, this Weston, Weston dog. This is the back um, of the out outline. And you can see that it's all um, oxidized. So this is the copper. And it's a little bit wet because I just um, put it in some water. And I've used this scrubber brush, scrubber, oops, excuse me. The scrubber to just scrub off the edges because otherwise um, you can get all sorts of black into your enamel that just jump off. So this is the first layer of blue. You can sort of see the dog's outline there. That's the first layer of duck egg blue that I'm going to do. Don't mind these two holes. I used to have a hydraulic press um, bolted to this table but now it's bolted elsewhere. So that's the outline and that's the pale blue. And that's just the first coat. So I have to do a coat on the back as well. And I'm just going to use like an industrial style, kind of um, very tough enamel on the back of that. And then I'll then I can just put one coat on the back of this, and then I will be able to um, do several coats of the blue to make it really nice. Okay, I'm um, putting on this counter enamel which goes on the back of this piece and it's liquid um, and I'm just putting it on with like a, a big lollipop stick it doesn't have to be gorgeous or anything like that it's going to be on the back the only reason um, to use counter enamel is because you need to balance out the enamel on the front with enamel on the back because otherwise uh, areas particularly like this little narrow area could chip or get fractures in it or crack. Now it's much less likely with a wall hanging than it is, which is, this is going to be obviously, than it is with a piece of jewellery. Um, but just as a rule, I always put counter enamel on the back. It also s helps to prevent warping because what happens in the kiln is that the copper uh, expands with the heat, which it's set at about 800 degrees Celsius. The copper expands with the heat as does the enamel because it's glass and then once they go cold um, they can the, the enamel and the glass uh, sorry the enamel and the copper contract but they do it at slightly different rates which can cause tension now that little piece has a lot on it I might just scrape a bit off okay so there we are. And in order just to even it out a bit, I just tap it like that. And in fact, yeah. So I'm just going to wait for that to dry. And then um, I'll sit it up on top of the kiln, wait for it to dry. And then I'll be able to turn it over and it won't drop off. And I can do the second layer of duck egg glue. Okay, now I'm going to do the second coat of blue. Uh, onto this dog and I'm just switching on my extractor <clears throat> so let's do that there we want to try and get it even I actually really like oh sorry I didn't show you the back that's the back now it's just liquid enamel that's gone dry I sit it, sat it up on top of the kiln <clears throat> and it went dry and now so I can just turn it over and it stays on and I like these areas here that are sort of golden. That's one of the reasons why I chose this color. Um, now, we're not going to have too many of those golden areas, but we're going to see how they work out and see if we can get something nice out of them. Now... By the time I got down there, some of the grains are a little bit bigger and they don't go through the sifter very well. So I usually just toss those out and you can see the difference in color. Those are much bigger particles than those ones. So I need a little bit for here because I want to have it to have an even finish. So that's the second coat. We may go for a third coat, probably will, um, but we'll see how that works out first. This is how the uh, the piece looks on the mesh 
before it goes into the kiln. This is just basically steel mesh. Um, and you need to have that in the kiln because otherwise you can't lift it up off the kiln floor. So what I'm going to be doing is lifting it up and the piece is balanced on top of what's um, called ceramic fiber board. Uh, because it's an awkward shape, I'm not going to use the regular kind of trivets that I use like that because it's just too messy and it can become destable, destabilized inside the kiln and then fall off. So that's messy. So what I'm going to do is move this back slightly. Whoops. And then I will show you it. There's my kiln. And I hope this stays up without falling down. And I'm going to stick it in. And I'll set the timer for about two minutes. Okay, it's ready to come out. It's a bit more than two minutes. And that's it. It's kind of a, whoops, greenish color when it comes out. So we just need it, we'll leave it to cool over here. And that's a pretty good, fairly thick coat. It looks pretty good to me. So that'll be nice and blue. And I think I will, um, it'll have lovely black edges. But what I'm going to do to take this sort of uniformity off it is I will use some of the transparent um, sort of turquoise blue on top in areas just to give it a bit more, just to give the piece something a bit more je ne sais quoi, something that you really want to examine. And then I'll get going on the dog. Okay, this looks like it's going to be exactly the same color, but it isn't. Um, this is transparent sort of a turquoisey color. So I'm just doing it kind of unevenly. Not doing too much. And I think that should be okay. Let's see what that looks like. Right, this is what we have. I'm really happy with that color. Um, really happy with it. It's one of my favorite colors. Okay, now we need to get onto the dog. Okay, uh, now we are going to start on the actual dog himself. This is Weston. Um, this is an exploded view of Weston. So obviously he'll be um, put back together again properly like that. But um, I, I, I'm going to be doing um, all his separate facial parts and ears uh, separately. And I, I almost always do the nose and eyes last. I like to get the whole dog's look first. Now we have, these are some of the enamels I'm just considering. Um, I usually keep them in glass jars because it's better to keep enamels in glass than in plastic. So these are kind of, now it's very bright, it's very sunny outside. Cold but sunny, which is nice. So anyway, these are some of the colors that I'm considering from Light brown, which is opaque. Uh, ochre yellow, which is a fabulous color. Actually, really, really nice. Um, brown ochre. I don't have much of that, but that could go on as a very light layer. Light brown, which is... And this is transparent. And what is this one? It's copper. Um, the browns actually are really beautiful in, in uh, enamels. But they kind of get overlooked because I think people find brown is a bit of a, an ugly color. But it can be really beautiful. Um, anyway, these are nice. So I shall see. I may do some tests with these first. But I shall see what they look like. And I'll be back to you. Okay, I'm, I've just decided to go straight for the light, yeah, light brown. Um, the first coat. Uh, the first sort of sifting of enamel in this case is not that important. We just want to get the color on. We're going to see where some of it is burned off, where it could be nice. It'll have probably um, three or four at least firings of, of colors. Um, so some of this will burn off anyway because it's going to be quite a light coat. But I just want to see what the brown looks like here. And actually in a minute I'll show you a photograph of Weston so you can see what his coloring is it's sort of he's sort of golden golden color and he's got a gray back but we won't even see his back in this it'll just mostly be golden
I'm not doing a very heavy coat. I'm just trying to keep it fairly even. And I'm going around the edges first. And when it starts getting stuck like that, I usually get um, a coin and chuck it in. And the coin sort of forces the enamel through. And the reason I, I put it, the dog together, because I, I want it to be more or less in position so that the coat is quite even. Now, I think that's fine. Um, I'm going to just go for that. I might brush a little bit off around the eyes, actually. Because dogs tend to have um, black around their eyes. And I'm actually going to brush a little bit off around his nose as well. Because just a bit. Okay. I'm going to fire that and we will see what that looks like. You can sort of see it there, it's a bit blurred. And while I'm waiting for this to fire, I always tidy up. It's a really bad idea to leave snow drifts like this of enamels a lot around. Um, even though I'll probably use this color again for a second sifting, like that's really messy. And it's not just that it's messy, it's that this is very finely powdered, leaded, leaded enamel. So you shouldn't have it just flapping about. And I always wear a surgical mask when I'm working as well. So if, if I sound a bit muffled, that's why. Um, so always tidy up. I mean, that's okay sitting there. But you just don't want tons of it lying around because it's really, really bad for you. Okay. Okay, this is Weston so far after the first layer of light brown. Um, I'm kind of still hot. You can see loads of copper oxide has uh, come off. I didn't do um, any enamel on the back yet. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna use the same white liquid. Uh, one of the reasons, you can kind of decide yourself really. Um, one of the reasons I just decided to go straight for the color uh, is because then it being in the kiln it burns off any grease or anything like that that prevents the liquid enamel from sticking um, I mean the only downside is that it's messy because there's all this has come off it but anyway that's it now as far as the color goes it is quite dark but that's okay I missed out you can see his cheek is a little bit blackish but that's okay I kind of noticed that when I was putting it into the kiln but I thought to hell with it I'll just go for it um, so, uh, and you can see because y there isn't any enamel in the back, it's gone slightly warped because there's so much on the front. Anyway, that's all fine. That'll be flattened out. And even if you hear it cracking, that's fine as well because once it goes back into the kiln, all of that glass will fuse together again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do the liquid enamel on the back, let it dry. I'm going to do a second coat of the same color and then we're going to review the situation okay see you in a minute i went rogue and decided not to do what i said i was going to do and do so while the um the liquid enamel was drying on the back as the counter enamel i decided on a different plan so what i did was um i'll just show you weston as he currently is so he's looking looking a little bit more goldeny but what i did was i um, put them back down on these. These things are just um, bottle caps and they're there just to lift so that I can lift the pieces up. If they were flat on the paper I'd mess all the enamel up trying to lift them. Anyhow, so I used this lovely cream colour which is opaque. Then I transferred Weston onto another sheet because you don't want to sift two colours onto one sheet because then you just mess up your colours. This beautiful ochre, yellow ochre. 
Then I lifted him and I had the final one I did here was um, a transparent light brown just to bring it down again a little bit. So what I'm going to do is stick it in the kiln, uh, see what it looks like when it comes out and then take it from there as to my next layers. Okay, this is what we have so far. Here is Weston. Uh, you can see that um, he has what is called an orange peel texture. You can see the difference between the blue and his, um, his face and body. <clears throat> I've been under firing it slightly, that's why it has that look. Um, but I'll go for the shiny look. But anyhow, we have a few more colors to put on. We need to brighten up his fur because even though it's a pretty good um, likeness to his fur, I want to have some highlights, I want it to be nice and bright and obviously I have to do his nose and ears. So I'm going to get started on that. And um, But anyhow, that's how it looks so far. There's my cup of tea and we'll get started. Okay, here we have Weston again uh, and I'm going to do a second a uh, very light sifting of this beautiful uh, cream color. We want to get a few highlights here in his ears, at the top of his ears, a little bit around his face. And do some around here, some on the top of his ear again there. I think that's okay. Um, then I'm going to move him to the next sifting station, which is whoops, which is here. And this is a color we haven't used before, or I, since you're many miles away, possibly. Um, I want to actually put that little earpiece close to that. Okay. And for this one, I'm going to use this beautiful marigold yellow, which is obviously very yellow and, you know, not really dog colored. But I'd like to be able to have some very nice golden -y highlights. Use a bit of artistic license. Okay, there's already a coin in there. That's fine. And the yellow, this yellow is quite a strong color. Like it does, it does come out. It comes out the color you see here, basically. And what I'm probably gonna do I'm going to do more of an even layer here. So I'm going to see how this looks. I'm going to damp it down a little bit with the with the ochre, which is a very good color for this guy. It's very close to his real colouring. It's basically a slightly less strong version of the yellow. And I'm doing a more even coat of this color. Now that seems very yellow, but we're going to go for it anyway. Um, because what I might do is I'll, I'll continue layering and I'll probably also use what's called an a London stone to sort of stone back some of that yellow. Let me get it closer. So that's currently how he is. 
and we'll stick them in the kiln and see what happens. You might remember also that I was trying to keep a little bit of black around Weston's snout. So I'm going to brush some of this off. I didn't brush it off um, over at the enameling station because I don't want these colors getting all mixed up on the paper when I, you know, for when I pour them back in to their jars. So I'll do that here. It doesn't matter if it's kind of, if I get a little bit, um, uh, just on my countertop here beside the kiln. Okay. Right. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Whoops. So you can hopefully see around the eyes and nose that I've just done. It. I think I need a bit more there. Anyway, there we go. Let's give it a try. What I'm doing here with this sort of grubby looking water, uh, it's actually only grubby because it's got um, some oxides in it. Uh, because he has a lot of hair, this dog, and he kind of almost has a parting um, there, up his sort of up his nose. I'm going to use this. It's in a London stick. Uh, it's very coarse. It's almost like coarse granite. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to stone back some of the enamel just to give that impression. Uh, it takes a bit of elbow grease, um, and, and you have to do it under water because if you do it dry then some of the powders sort of start floating off into the into the air and it's just not good for you and also these this is very dry and that's dry and then some of this will get into the enamel and it won't be nice so you have to do it um wet and i'm also taking a bit more off around his nose as well just to and that coppery color will go black uh hopefully you can see it in the kiln it, um, I'll be using black, a little bit of black and grey on him anyway. But anyway, I just want to get some of that back here. Not even that much. Just a hint, really. Uh, I'm going to get a bit of a hint down, leading to where his mouth is. Down here as well. I mean, it doesn't have to be terribly accurate. This is an artistic portrayal of this dog. A bit more around the eyes. I've noticed that his eyes have got a bit more black around them, which is fine because I can enhance those anyway. And I think I'm going to pretty much almost leave this sort of burned part. That's one of the benefits, um, one of the beautiful things that I think about enameling is that you get these really lovely sort of burned areas if you, you know I've been avoiding putting too much on this because I I think that's very nice because um, you don't want a flat color especially when you're doing so you know an animal um, because they don't have flat colors okay I think that's okay for the moment with uh, Weston's face and I think his ears and everything are fine I'm just gonna do some shading on his neck and on his ears just give a bit more depth to the whole thing. And then I shall meet you back at the enameling station. There you go. What I'm doing now is I'm going to just do some shading here. Grey. I'm going to shade this guy. That's sort of the inner ear. I'm going to do a little bit of shading. It was just a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there. And a little bit around his nose and for that I'm going to use this beautiful it's a transparent whoops there we go it's a transparent grey and uh, it's quite dark but because it's transparent you'll be able to see not so much color but you'll be able to see beneath it um, I'm gonna go quite darkish here see what happens with that I think that's too much. Whenever I do stuff that's too much, you just go, you just tip it off. You don't need to get your knickers in a big twist. Just don't fire it. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's better. I think it's blended a little bit nicely, more nicely. Now this is going to be quite dark, this ear piece. Um, I don't want that on his head. The reason I put his entire thing together is just it's better for me to see the whole dog than just do individual pieces. I'm going to leave that one over here. Um, and I'm going to just do a little bit of the edge here. Yeah, I think that's okay. That may not show up very well. If it doesn't show up, um, I'll just do a little bit more of a layer. Just a little bit there. And I don't want too much around his eyebrow because that was quite nice and bright. And I'm going to get another sifter and do around his nose. This is a smaller sifter. You can see the difference in size there. And it also has much tighter mesh, so less will go through, which is also fine. Okay. No, I just hope I'm not undoing all my hard work, but there we are. We can always go back and do the highlights afterwards. So, um, I'm also going to put a little tiny bit of orange around the bridge of Weston's nose. Okay, I'm going to use some of this lovely tangerine orange. I know it's incredibly bright, but um, I'm using a very... This is a 200 mesh sifter, so the mesh is even tighter, so even less will go through. Anyhow, we'll just... Just a hint, really. Okay. Let's see what that could be like. And then I think I'm going to just do the highlights. Um, he actually really has very golden hair, so I'm thinking I'll have to do quite a few highlights. But anyhow, we'll get to that. Here we are. Now, uh, I'm happy with that. I'm going to do a little bit more shading here. And a little bit more where his ear meets his head here and here. Um, I'm going to actually go for a little bit more of that tangerine orange. It's one of my favorite colors. It's one of my go-to colors. Um, because I think he needs it around his sort of mustachey beard a bit more. This um, sort of area that I've left, I think I might need to put a little bit of enamel on that because it's kind of almost down to the copper. But that's okay. And then I'm going to darken this up a little bit too. And... I think then we shall be fine. And what I'm also going to do, I think, is put a few little sneaky um, millefiori, not the red ones, because that's too, that's too bright, but um, some of the ones that are close enough to his own color. And maybe, I like to do it maybe like a little mole on the eyebrow. Anyway, I will think of that, or sometimes I do it near you know, near the nose, or I could do a bit of a Cindy Crawford on it down here. Anyway, I shall see. I only, I do that just because I think sometimes it's nice, you know, if you look at something from a distance, a piece of art from a distance, and you think, oh, I must go and examine that, and you don't even see the little details, and then you go and see something like that. I just think it's a bit of fun. Just to add a little bit of oomph. Okay, I'll get on with it, and I'll show you the results. We're nearing the end, and I'm doing the nose and the eyes. Uh, the nose, I'm going to go for opaque black. We'll need a couple of layers of this because it burns off quite easily. So that's the opaque black for the nose. We'll give that a firing, and I'm going to just um, do the eyes. Now you can probably hardly see those eyes. Is that any good? Anyway, those are the eyes, and I'm going to use soft white. 
the eyes. And they'll need, um, actually they're not going to need that much white because actually his eyes are quite deep set. But we'll start with white and then we'll go to brown and black with those. I'm doing the eyes now. Um, so there are two layers of white on those eyeballs and I'm going to be using a little bit of brown. I set them in the face just because I need to know where, you know, where he's looking. Uh, whoops, and I'm using this really small little sifter. Um, I've just realized, yeah, I don't want him looking cross-eyed. Actually, I think I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm not happy with it. I've already made a mistake, but anyhow, that's fine. That can be rectified here. There we go. I want him to be looking up slightly. Oh, oops, this has spilled. Not to worry. So what I need to do in that case is leave a little bit of the whites at the bottom showing. Now the eyes are always really difficult to do. So what I think I'll do is leave that, do those eyes. If they're wrong, I'll just redo them. Um, and then I need to put a little highlight on the dog's nose. But I'll do that in a minute. Here are the eyes. They're gonna hopefully have their final firing. I used um, two coats of white, two firings of brown, uh, and now I'm on black with a white highlight. So we'll see. I hope they don't come up cross-eyed because then there'll be a bit of work to do. Okay, see you on the other side. Now I think this is finished. I've fired the eyes a number of times. Um, the background is done. So let's see where we are with him. And the eyes are kind of the acid test of whether or not you got it right because as anyone who owns, owns, has uh, an animal that they love, especially a dog, because they tend to look you in the eye. Um, that's kind of important. <laughs> it's very important. It's very important to get them making eye contact with you in um, a portrait as well. Okay. Okay, here we go. Eyeball number one. Eye number two. Yeah, I think he looks pretty cute. There we are. There's Weston. Weston, the wonderful terrier. He's actually a show dog. He's uh, won loads of awards for his handsome body and face and all of that. So, thank you for watching. And when actually when this is um, framed, I'll put a picture of it uh, along with the video.